All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakwadash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you, elect Akiam and Akwath across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp. Coming at you all with another lesson through the Spirit. And Lord, as well as edifying. All right, and this is going to be in a transit as I'm on my way home from work. And was just doing some meditating on a few things, just looking at the different events that are coming to pass. Different events that are obvious signs that shows you that our Lord is getting ready to come and save us. All right, you got celebrities waking up, calling on the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right, even you got Kanye, who went on a rant last night, you know, uh, going into how he almost killed his daughter you know um he's throwing e in there which we understand that that means esau and it goes to show you that these people are watching the prophets they listening to us and these are obvious signs all right these are obvious signs that the scriptures say that the men are going to get fame in those days and we see that coming to pass and also too man just our people don't have a comforter all right and as they've walked on in wickedness now they're seeing that this place is ending and their riches ain't going to save them. So now they're going to the next resort. Hey, and certain of those celebrities might actually repent and come to the knowledge. Certain of them, hey, they just threw, you know. But all in all, these are different signs that shows you that we're in the last days. Now, this lesson here isn't about that. I just wanted to bring up those different examples, which shows you that the Lord is hearing the groanings and the complaints of the elect. All right. He's hearing the groanings and the complaints of the elect. All right. And he's showing us signs that he's here for us and that he's going to come. He's getting ready to come back very soon. And we believe that through faith. We can't put a number to it. We can't say what day it's going to be, what month it's going to be, what year it's going to be. And even Yahweh Shai doesn't know. All right. But we've been blessed with the eyes to see the time that we're in right now. We've been blessed with the eye salve. OK. So with that being the case. All right. Within that being the case. The Lord is going to save his men and he's going to continue to do miraculous works and wonders. All right. To help increase our faith and to get us up out of here. All right. Hold on. Let the cops ride right past me. Oh, snaps. Hey, that's a military vehicle right there. Okay. So I'm going to read this here in the book of Psalms 102 because, hey, man, hey, the, 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 the elect are afflicted right now. All right. Brothers are going through many things. All right. And this is the straight gate As we had prophesied As Yahweh had said Going into the straight gate We're experiencing this right now Okay This is the book of Psalms 102 and 1 It says a prayer of the afflicted When he is overwhelmed And poureth out his complaint before the Lord And there's times in this truth When you feel overwhelmed You don't know what the hell is going on in your life You don't know what's going on You know some bizarre things happen to you You know now this is something that's comforting That's going to help you brothers that might be feeling that way right now It says hear my prayer O Lord and let my cry come unto thee Hide not thy face from me in the day of when I am in trouble Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call answer me speedily Alright and the Lord is definitely answering us speedily I mean look at the events that are taking place on the earth Esau's fallen You got plagues on the planet earth America's done. America's literally done. They're getting rid of um, cash to the point where they're literally planning on making this a, a digital currency-based society. All right, and those are only uh, brief examples that I'd said. There's so much more taking place, and we can't forget the conflict that's going on in the Middle East right now. We can't forget that. All right, because those nations are joining, joining together over in the Middle East. And when I say joining together, I mean they're literally gathering together. To get ready to do the great war World War 3 Okay And these are things that we prophesied about These are things that we spoke of And now we see these events transpiring Coming to pass It says for my days are consumed like smoke And my bones Are burnt as in hearth As in hearth My heart is smitten And withered like the grass So that I forget to eat my bread by reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. 
All right, so this is King David. This is a Psalm of David right here. All right, and it's titled A Prayer of the Afflicted. Okay, so this is the state that the elect are going to be in right now, especially in these days. All right, where you feel overwhelmed. So overwhelmed to the point where all you can do is just continue to groan to the Lord and make your complaint to the Heavenly Father. Because best believe he's going to hear your complaint. All right, even your house shot complain to the Lord, but this is the time right now where you make your complaint to the Lord. As the scriptures say, I believe it's in Philippians where it says, Care for nothing, but make thy request known unto the Most High. There's certain complaints and groanings that you have that you can't even utter to different brothers, only to the Lord. Certain things that you go through in the flesh, in the mind, in spirit, whatever the case is, hey man, you got to let it fly unto the Lord, you know? Because he's heeding our prayers. He's heeding our prayers. That's why these events are taking place on the planet Earth right now. Because he's hearing our prayers. He's hearing our cries, man. All right. And the more things that happen to you, as the scriptures say, thinking that strange concerning the fiery trial, which is meant to try you, the more things that take place in your life, the more things that happen unto you. These are opportunities that we have to cry unto the Lord and, and make our groaning unto the Lord. Okay. To ask the Lord to save you. To save us. To get us the hell up out of here, man. All right. Got another precept I'm going to pull up. Bear with me one sec. Baba Gashaw. Again, I'm, I'm driving right now. But it's the book of Romans chapter 8. And I'm going to start at verse 26. And I've been meditating on this scripture the past few days. But it's the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 26. And it reads... It says, likewise, the spirit also helpeth with our infirmities. OK, so there's certain infirmities that brothers might be going through that really you don't even know that you might be in the brink of death. If you was an average person, if you was an average regular person who the spirit is not dealing with, they wouldn't be able to handle things that we're going through right now. But we have the Holy Spirit that's within us that works with our infirmities. Now, right as the scriptures say, all right, we've been given the treasure in earthen vessels. And this spirit that we have helps aid in the infirmities and the ailments and the things that we deal through in this flesh, man. It says, for we know not what we should say, I'm sorry, what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit itself make its intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. All right. And what was read earlier in Psalms 102 was an example of groanings. That was an example. All right. And that was a Psalm of David. Hey, the greatest man that ever walked the planet Earth groaned unto the Lord. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, all right, which means oil press, and Yahweh Shai had represented that oil being pressed, he was groaning and complaining unto the Lord. Okay, now we understand balance, and we understand we don't walk with that woe is me spirit, but hey, man, there's times when you're going to groan, complain, and cry unto the Lord. Due to the affliction that you're going through, the things that take place in your lives, you know, Certain times you feel so overwhelmed You don't know what the hell to do In the flesh that is And that's when you resort to the spirit And you cry unto the Lord And you ask the Lord to save us To get us out of here Deliver us from evil You throw up curses unto Babylon Curses unto the wicked And best believe man The Lord gonna hear that He's gonna take heed Cause the scriptures say it Alright The scriptures say it Verse 27 says And he that searcheth the hearts Knoweth what is the knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the good will of the most high. And who are the saints? Who are the saints? Those are the Israelites. But out of the saints, out of the Israelites, who are the ones that are calling unto the name of the Lord? The elect. They're going to be calling unto the name of the Lord, making groaning. And as it's written, when we do that, there's intercession that's being made. And who was the intercessor? That's Yahweh Shai. And he's pleading our cause to the Heavenly Father. He's pleading our cause. Out of the things that we might have done in the flesh that we might do to the point where you look at yourself and feel like, oh, wretched man am I. We can't forget that we have Yahweh Shai that's up there in the heavens making intercession for our groanings. We have the spirit that's within us that maketh intercession with our groanings. All right? Because what's it, what does it say in John 14? It says, if any man love my father and love me, my father and himself will make our abode within you. So we have the spirit within us, all right, which is the spirit of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, making intercession for us. Covering those shortcomings that, 
that that we going through. All right. Again, as it's written, as I said earlier, we have this treasure here in earthen vessels. All right. And I did a lesson last week going into not sleeping on the gospel, man, because it's the good news. All right. And we can't forget that no matter what things take place within our lives. We can't forget that. And knowing this, we call unto the Lord. That's why the Apostle Paul said, wherefore we cry, Abba, Father. We had that opportunity. In this earthen, wretched, piece of shit flesh that we in, we still have the ability to cry unto our Father in heaven. All right? And as it's written, he's going to hear our groanings. Again, as I stated earlier, looking at the example of the things that are taking place on the earth, these things are happening on the planet earth because he's hearing our groanings. All right. The reason why you have this mass influx of Israelites waking up is because he's hearing our groanings. The reason why the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic, I should say, is taking place is because he's hearing our groanings. The reason why these celebrities are waking up calling on the name of the Lord. All right. It's because he's hearing our groanings. All right. He's getting ready to save us, brothers. Lord's willing we to elect of course, but he's getting ready to save us, man. The Lord is getting ready to come back swiftly, sooner than we've believed. He's coming back so soon. I don't believe it's going to be 20 years from now. Now, could it be? It could be. We don't know, but the way prophecy is popping off and the way things are happening, I believe the Lord is coming back soon, sooner than we could even fathom. That's what we got to continue to pray, push forward, and continue to complain unto the Lord. Because as we complain unto the Lord, he's remembering the covenant that he had made with our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Matter of fact, that leads me to this precept here in the book of Exodus. Because when you read this here in Exodus, the second chapter, this is going to when we were held captive in ancient Egypt. And as we were getting stricken and beat by those Egyptians, all right, and we cried and, and complained unto the Lord and he heard our groanings. How much more does this have to apply to, to Mystery Babylon, to Egypt 7.0, Rome 7.0? Okay? So this is the book of Exodus chapter 2, verse 23. And it says, And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Egypt sighed by reason of bondage. And they cried, and their cry came up to the Most High by reason of bondage. And is that not what we're doing when we do these shows? When we go on the highways and the hedges, all right, when we do our prayers individually by ourselves, is that not what we're doing? And you got to think about it. He had heard the Israelites cry. We were in ancient Egypt. That was a lot of wicked niggas that was crying unto the Lord back then. And he still heard it. It was a lot of wicked Israelites that was crying unto the Lord back then, man. Okay. Of course, there was a lot. It was righteous Israelites, too. But you had a lot of Israelites that was complaining due to the oppression and they were wicked and the Lord still, still hurt them. So how much more do we have to apply this with the elect crying unto the Lord day in and day out? All right. This is verse 24. And remember, I read Psalms 102 when David was going into his groanings. I read Romans the eighth chapter where it talked about how the spirit maketh intercession with our groanings. So this is Exodus 2 and 24. And the Most High heard their groaning. And the Most High remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And the Most High looked upon the children of Israel, and the Most High had respect unto them. All right, and just as the Most High had respect unto them, all right, due to the covenant that he had made with our fathers, man, how much more did this have to apply here right now within these latter days when the Lord's getting ready to come back? All right. This is a covenant that was made with our fathers, and this is an everlasting covenant that you read about. Us here in these last days crying unto the Lord was written. He told us to do this. He told us to call on to him. He said if we call unto him in the land of our captivities and, and, and bethink ourselves, all right, he was going to save us and gather us out of the lands that we were held captive. And that's in the book of 1 Kings, the 8th chapter, and that's also in the book of Baruch, the 4th chapter. And we are seeing this transpiring. We are seeing this come to pass. And it don't matter what any type of scoffer has to say, what a vocab Malone has to say, what Nate has to say going in, into the name, talking about how that's not the name. We don't have the name. It don't matter. It don't matter because they're fulfilling their portion. We got the truth and we understand it. 
and we're fulfilling prophecy. We're doing exactly what the Lord said we was going to be doing, and that was going to be calling on the names of Yahweh while Yahweh Shai here within these latter days. And what's taking place? The Lord is intervening in a mass scale. All right. And that's going to lead to Yahweh Shai coming back, getting us the fuck, excuse my language, but getting us the hell out of this place, man. <laughs> getting us the fuck out of this place. It's delivering us from this flesh, this wretched flesh. Delivering us from these chains, from this captivity. Hey, the Lord's coming to do that, man. And that's happening soon. We just got to believe it. All right? And I'm going to end it off here in the book of Isaiah, the 19th chapter. And this is going into an, a sacrifice that's being made in Egypt. All right? And, hey, and you, brothers, you represent that sacrifice. All right? You represent that sacrifice being sacrificed and offered up in the land of Egypt. Which Egypt is modern day, uh, modern day Egypt is America, if you can receive it. Okay? And it's one of my favorite scriptures right here. I bring this scripture out so much, I might sound like a broken record. Alright? But hey, it is what it is. This is Isaiah chapter 19, verse 19. In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. Alright? Which is America. Okay? And you got brothers also too, in the four corners of the earth, not just America, preaching and prophesying. Okay, and what did Yahweh say? He said, when this gospel is preached in the four corners of the earth, then shall the end come. And this gospel has been preached to the four corners of the earth. All right. But the largest portion of this gospel being preached is in Egypt. All right. Which is America, if you can receive it. Isaiah the 19th chapter, when it's talking about Egypt, this is talking about America. Okay. It says, in a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. So this is that sacrifice. An altar is what's used for a sacrifice to be laid on, to be sacrificed. All right. And that altar can be the highways where you at. All right. The place where you go to pray at. Okay. That's that altar. And you represent that sacrifice that's on the altar. That's why it's written in Psalms 44. Matter of fact, I know I said I was going to end it off in um, Isaiah 19. But I'm, I'm going to end it off there. But I'm going to read this real quick. In Psalms chapter 44 verse 14 And it says Thou makest us a byword among the heathen And shaketh I'm sorry And shaketh of the head of the people I think it's 44 and 11 Salakia Yeah Salakia y'all This is Psalms 44 and 11 It says Thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat And hast scattered us among the heathen So when it says Thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat That means thou hast given us to be a sacrifice all right, and where have we been at? All right, well, we've been given like sheep appointed to meat. All right, we've been scattered among the heathen in the land of our captivity. In Egypt, America is one of the main places that the Israelites were scattered at. We've been given like sheep appointed for meat. All right, we've been slain, we've been afflicted, we've been put in captivity, we've been a byword and a reproach, as it was written in Psalms 44 and 14. All right, the majority of those prophecies were fulfilled. As we were over here in Babylon Egypt 2.0 America Okay So as I want to jump back to Isaiah 19 And 20 Alright When it said in verse 19 There shall be an altar to the Lord In the midst of the land of Egypt In that altar That's what we've been given like sheep Appointed for meat Okay But what does it say here in verse 20 And it shall be for a sign And for a witness unto the Lord of hosts In the land of Egypt So what we're doing right now is a sign unto the Lord Crying out unto the Lord Groaning unto the Lord As it was written That's a sign Okay What we're doing right now Is a sign unto the Lord Making our complaint Crying because of these devils That's a sign unto the Lord We're giving out a spiritual SOS If you will Okay It says And they shall cry unto the Lord Because of the oppressors And that's what we're doing And when you go into the word cry Let's see what this word mean Because it pretty much goes in the groaning That word there is Is Tazaikwa And it says to make an outcry To be summoned to cry together To cry for help And that's what we're doing when we're making groaning In the land of our captivity Okay That's what we're doing It says for they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors And who is the oppressor right now? Let's just call a spade a spade, man. Yeah, yeah. Vocab Malone, all you people that's out here, you can say that Esau's not the so-called white man. 
But who are the ones that had us in captivity here in the last days? Because we can clearly acknowledge that it's the last days. And who were the main ones that were afflicted in the last days? Who were the main ones that were afflicted beyond measure in the last days? You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. So here in the last days, with us being on the highways, making our complaint and our groaning to the Lord because of this devil, man, we're filling prophecy. And again, as I said earlier, that's why these events are taking place on the earth. That's why this stuff is transpiring right now, because we are fulfilling prophecy. These events are taking place because we are a sign unto the Lord. Okay? And it says, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. And that's what we're waiting for. And that's what we believe is going to happen soon, man. That's what we believe is going to happen soon. All right? The Lord is literally shortening the days just so we won't die here in this flesh. <laughs> And just so he can send his savior to deliver us out of here. Okay? And we got to trust and believe that. Yahweh Shah is coming back, brothers, sisters. Yahweh Shah is coming back, man. So don't fret. And when you do feel weak and broken, cry unto the Lord, man. Cry unto the Lord, because best believe he's hearing your prayers. He's remembering his covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he has respect unto his elect. Okay, so I'm going to end it off on that. Lord's with us was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you, elect Akim, across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom.